Hi, I'm Gordon Ung with Maximum PC. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about Intel's brand new monster, eight core Haswell E processor in just four minutes. Not three minutes like I promised just a minute ago because I've already burned a minute talking. But this processor is basically two of these. This is of course Intel's Haswell processor. This is the hot Devil's Canyon part. Intel put this into a Xerox machine, press the copy button, bam, this CPU has eight cores. It is Intel's first desktop processor. Xeons are not desktop processor. This is an actual Core i7-5960X. It comes in at three gigahertz, which sounds a little low, and it turbos up to 3.5 gigahertz. That 3.5 is a little bit of a lie though, because frankly, in most of the tests I ran, it sits at about 3.3 gigahertz. That is not overclocked, of course. It is a fully unlocked processor. I've talked with a lot of vendors, motherboard and system vendors. They've told me they're seeing about 4.5 to 4.6 out of their Haswell samples. Some of them, the real dogs, down at 4.2, but generally you're gonna get a pretty good overclock on all eight cores out of this part. And of course, this is not this chip, which is the older Sandy Bridge E. It is an LGA 2011 part. This is an LGA 2011 V3. Are you confused? Good, because I am. Intel decided to call this the LGA 2011 V3, not the LGA 2011. It's completely different and incompatible. This is an older LGA 2011 motherboard. Does not work. You cannot take this new processor, put it into the old motherboard. Doesn't work. You cannot take this new processor and put it into this brand new LGA 2011 V3 motherboard. Does not work. Enough about that. This is the brand new LGA 2011 V3 socket. This is on a pre-production Gigabyte, let me get the number right because I am gonna mess it up, GA X99 Gaming 5. The cool thing is, a load, can I say that? Damn. A crap load of USB ports, 10 SATA 6 ports, all of them SATA 6. Now people, who came from X79, know one of the weaknesses of that platform, only two SATA 6 ports, this gives you 10. There's also SATA Express, but that's actually not included in the new chipset. Motherboard vendors are having to put that on by themselves. There's also M.2 support, which people are more excited about. In fact, I'm more excited about than SATA Express. Not in the chipset, motherboard vendors all adding it on their own. Again, the socket is different. You cannot put an old LGA 2011 in this part, but, Fortunately, you can use all of your old cooling gear. If you have an old water cooler, even an air cooler that's beefy, it will work on this board if you are taking it from your older 2011 part. So let's actually talk about the processor itself. It's basically the fastest consumer processor I've ever seen. If in video encoding tests against this four gigahertz Devil's Canyon part, it is 45% faster. Now that may not sound like much, but if you are encoding a video and it takes you three hours on your, your quad core Devil's Canyon part, you're gonna cut that almost in half with this baby. And if you're getting paid, it's worth it. Of course, the difference is clock speed. You put eight cores in this thing, it uses a lot of power, it takes a lot of cooling. The vendors I've talked to said, if you intend to overclock this, forget about air cooling. It's only gonna be water with this baby. Of course, we all knew that. If you are buying a brand new $1,000 CPU, you're gonna have to water cool it. This isn't, of course, the only processor in the lineup. There's two others. If you're gagging on $1,000 for the eight core part, Intel does have a new six core processor at about $600, $583. Big difference, two fewer cores. And then the actual sweet spot in this lineup may be Intel's previously $350 CPU. It's now $380. The actual model number on that sweet spot part may be the core is the Core i7 5820K. It's about 380, I'd expect it hopefully to street at about $375. That sounds expensive, but for $370, you are getting a six core Haswell part. That's gonna be, of course, faster and multi-threaded loads than the quad core Devil's Canyon part. Of course, you can't get six cores in the older, smaller LGA 1150 socket. You've gotta move into the big boy socket, LGA 2011 V3. So for a little bit more money, I mean, this is about $350 to $380, you're getting two more cores. You can never do that before with Intel. Previously, if you wanted six cores on Intel, you had to pay $550 to $600. Sounds awesome, right? You're getting two more cores. Was there anything else you'd want? No, except for one thing. Intel knows that's such a good deal 
they're gonna somehow mess it up for you. So this bottom end processor, not this one, but the 5820 part, $380, they've actually intentionally turned off some of the PCIe lanes on that chip. So this actual part, 40 PCIe lanes. The bottom end, three, the budget part, at $400, $380, only has 28 PCIe lanes. So if you wanna run multiple video cards, it's gonna have a little less bandwidth. It's still gonna have more than Devil's Canyon, but it's gonna give you a little bit of pause. Are you gonna go, do I wanna pay the extra $300 and get the all the PCIe lanes? For the most part, if you're running two cards, you should be fine. And if you're looking for a budget six core machine, that 5820K part may be the way to go. How long has it been? Am I over my four minutes? I'm running up against my four minutes now, so the last thing I'm gonna to touch on, besides bringing you a new socket, and finally, the ability to get an eight core processor for less than $2,000. Xeons were never cheap. You could never get a Sandy Bridge E eight core for $1,000. There's also DDR4 support. This CPU actually has the first consumer DDR4, DDR4 memory controller, which means you'll need all brand new memory. Here is some Corsair DDR4 Vengeance. These are just four gig DIMMs. I do not actually know the final price of DDR4 yet, but it's not gonna be cheap. I've heard possibly $400 for 16 gigs of RAM, which is gonna be pretty painful if you're coming from DDR3, but DDR3 has been pretty expensive anyway. The cool thing is DDR4 should pack in more chips. It's actually designed so you can stack them. So hopefully we can get to 128 gig configurations on the 2011 V3 board. It also runs at insane frequencies. DDR4 2133 is the base speed for Haswell E, and I've already got parts coming in that are hitting 2800, 2900, 3000, and this is brand new memory on a brand new processor. So I think we're going to easily exceed, you know, DDR3, uh, DDR4 3000 speed. We could be into the 3500 this year, and hopefully 16 gig DIMMs if we're lucky. So my last thought here, you're going to want to know. What should I buy? I don't recommend that anybody buys uh, Ivory Bridge E or Sandy Bridge E at this point. It's an old platform. The motherboards, unless you're getting a great deal on them, have a lot of limitations compared to X99. So that really leaves the LGA 1150 with Devil's Canyon, all the way down to Pentium K or Pentium uh, uh, Anniversary Edition, all the way up to eight core, six core Haswell E. I really think for most people, quad core is the way to go still. A Core i5 Devil's Canyon part, great performer, good pricing. You don't have to pay DDR4, um, ex the expensive DDR4. The motherboards will be cheaper. For the average person who's gonna run two video cards, perfect. You don't need any more, even for the enthusiast. For a real enthusiast who's gonna run three video cards, four video cards, you need a crap load of PCIe lanes, and you work for a living. You, you render video, you render 3D. You really need eight cores and paying the $600 for four more cores, it's worth it. That's money you save and not sitting there waiting for things to finish. So that's everything you need to know about Hazel Lee in four minutes. Don't actually time this, because that's not actually four minutes.